my friends it's your old pal Jordan the Lion how are you all doing today I hope you said great today we're coming to you from Greenville Ohio and we're gonna do a little bit of Annie Oakley history if you remember probably a year ago I came out with my grandpa and we went and found where Annie Oakley's childhood home was and where she was buried and everything but what we didn't get to see was there was a place called the Garst Museum that actually has some of her memorabilia and that's what my mom and I are gonna check out today so Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. And they have these little signs all over town letting you know about it. Annie Oakley. Before we head over to the museum, I wanted to stop and show you guys the Annie Oakley Park again. It's kind of cool. I've never noticed this before. This is a mural of the old, an old depiction of downtown Greenville. And I did not know that this guy was from Greenville. Zachary Lansdowne, America's first rigid airship, CDR of the USS Shenandoah. And here's the downtown shot that that mural is depicting, modern day, right here at the Annie Oakley Park. Yeah, they actually made this entire corner of Greenville a dedication to the great Annie Oakley, who may be fair to say the greatest marksman of all time. Not just Mark's woman, but actually probably the greatest marksman of all time. In fact, she was so good at one point that she offered her services to the military to help teach people how to shoot accurately and they, for some reason, didn't take her up on her offer. Very cool statue here in town. She was born just a little bit north of here and learned to shoot on her family property there. Would help feed her family with the game that she would shoot out in the woods. And then eventually came back and passed away at a house here and was buried here. And then her husband who was also an excellent marksman. He competed against her before they were married and then he became her manager. When she passed away, he was so heartbroken that he did a hunger strike and passed away just a few short days later. Here they have a plaque that says, Little Sure Shot. That was Annie Oakley's nickname. You can see my mom checking out the statue over there. One of America's best known sports shooters and entertainers. Of the late 1800s, Annie Oakley was born Phoebe Ann Mosey, north of Versailles in Dark County, which we're in now, in 1860. She achieved local fame for her shooting ability as a hunter while still in her teens. By 1885, Oakley was a star performer in the Buffalo Bills Wild West. With husband and manager Frank Butler, she refined a shooting act and image that appealed to late 19th century notions of a romanticized but vanishing West. Throughout her 30-year performing career, Oakley provided honest entertainment in a deception-prone industry while demonstrating widening opportunities for women. She retained her Ohio ties throughout her life and is interred at Brock Cemetery 11 miles north of Greenville. Here they have a little plaque that said, I would like to see every woman know how to handle firearms as naturally as they know how to handle babies. Annie took it upon herself to teach women how to shoot for sport and for protection. She estimated teaching 15,000 women throughout her lifetime. This is very nice. They've dedicated this in 1990 to Annie Oakley as well. This is Annie Oakley Memorial Park, a legend in her own time. Aim at a high mark and you'll hit it. No, not the first time, nor the second time, and maybe not the third. But keep on aiming and keep on shooting, for only practice will make you perfect. 
Finally, you'll hit the bullseye of success, Annie Oakley. And here they're telling you to go visit her stuff at the Garst. So let's go. All right, we made it over to the Garst Museum, also known as the National Annie Oakley Center. And here at the museum, they have another plaque that says Annie Oakley was born Phoebe M. Moses in well, that's interesting. The other plaque said Mosey, and they even had a pronunciation. So this says Phoebe Ann Moses in 1860, the daughter of Jake and Suzanne Moses. At the age of 15, she shot a match at Cincinnati, Ohio with Frank Butler, whom she later married. In 1884, Annie joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West show and toured 18 years throughout America and Europe. She was acclaimed on both continents and gave command performances to royalty in England, France, Germany, and Russia. Following her retirement, Annie returned to Dark County where she died in 1926. Her husband gave her the stage name Annie Oakley. Her close friend Sitting Bull gave her the name Little Sure Shot. I'm excited to see this because I believe they have her guns here. So they call this the Garst House because it was donated by the Garst family, but it used to be a hotel for the railroad nearby. All right, so we're now entering the Annie Oakley Center. Apparently it's divided into two sections, her personal life and her professional life. This is all various merchandise based off of her legend. So there it is, the gun, or one of. Annie's best times were spent roaming the woods and fields of Western Ohio where she trapped birds and small animals. This was called a percussion rifle. 30 caliber half stock muzzle loader with mock tiger stripe, maple stock, set trigger 1855. She was the childhood neighbor of the donors of this gun. And it's one of the weapons in which she learned to shoot, it says. Wow, that's pretty cool. These are all her artifacts. And there's Annie right there. And it says that this is a coverlet woven in Covington, Ohio, owned by Annie's mother. And then this was the Bible kept by Shaw and the Moses family, given to the donor by Annie Oakley's brother, John Moses. Wow, that's cool. Annie Oakley's family records. So here they have a picture of her childhood home and her parents right there. And then a few items from the house, including a kerosene lamp right here owned by Annie's mother. This urn, she purchases a pickle jar and gave to her mother in 1876 when Annie left home for the first time. And then the other artifacts on the table and the table and the cloth all belong to Susan Moore Shaw in her North Star home, which was Annie's mother. And this is talking about the Dark County Fair starting in 1852, but by the 1870s, they had an annual fair had become a cultural event around here. And Annie attended this numerous times. Here's a picture of Annie and Frank Butler, her husband. It says in 1875, Annie visited her sister, who was married, Lydia Stein near Cincinnati. Hotel keeper Jack Frost, who knew Annie's reputation as a shooter, arranged a match between her 
and the professional exhibition marksman Frank Butler. The match was run according to regular trap shooting rules. Frank shot 24 out of 25 birds and he won by hitting all 25. Frank would later say he lost as soon as he saw the pretty and shy girl step to the mark. He had certainly fallen for her. That is a painting of Annie Oakley. So here we have some of Annie's stuff and it's a silk dressing gown with raised roses and leaf design gift to Annie from Frank in 1915. And they have a picture of her wearing it right here. It says, the frog closures have multiple dangling love knots closed with delicate metal shank buttons. Note the twisted thread detail around the neckline and continuing down the hem around the hems of the sleeves. Interesting. And then this side chair is dated 1890. It belonged to Annie Oakley and Frank Butler. The pillow was made from Annie's dress and the umbrella stand right here, this porcelain stand, was purchased by Annie for her home in 1910. Here we have what's said to be Frank Butler's gun but Annie Oakley's nephew said that Annie would also use this and Buffalo Bill would use it. But it was actually made for Frank Butler. Double barrel shotgun, 12 gauge. And that's Frank Butler's. Oh. While bird hunting with Annie, in New Jersey, Frank felt a sudden jolt when he looked at his shotgun. He could see that a careless deer hunter had fired a high-powered rifle in his direction. The bullet blasted a hole through his gun stock. Frank kept the stock and used it from then on in lectures regarding gun safety. Wowza. And then here, Frank's glasses and his gloves. And then down here, the Parker Brothers gun. This is all Frank Butler's memorabilia. Some of his spats and gun holsters, and personal belongings, one of his business cards. some of his cufflinks or some of the buttons for his shirts it looks like monogrammed handkerchief his address book and glasses wow pretty fascinating case to Frank Butler oh this is great Annie had a famous dog that her and Frank had named Dave that was a part of the act and you can see there she's got an apple on Dave's head and she's shooting the apple. They have a little bit of information about Dave here. Not only that, they have a story called The Life of Dave that was in a newspaper or magazine. Then they have his leash. They adopted a black and tan white English setter with deep soulful eyes and named him Dave after a showbiz friend, Dave Montgomery. Dave became a genial member of the family, enthusiastically escorting the butlers when they hunted. He patiently waited as Annie shot apples off his head during performances. He earned the name Red Cross Dave and the butlers toured army camps, raising money for the Red Cross during World War I. Their Christmas cards were even signed Dave Butler. <laughs> Tragically, in 1923, Dave was killed by an automobile in Leesburg, Florida. Aww. An article in the loose, local newspaper stated Annie and Frank feel the sorrow that parents would feel of the loss of a child.
And then that shows how tall Annie was. She was five foot. Just at five feet tall. Oh, it looks like we have some more of her clothing over here. So this case talks about their domestic life and how they lived, they had a home in Nutley, New Jersey and Pinehurst, North Carolina. Always kept ties here. This was their blanket from their home. Mexican blanket. And then actually some of their household belongings. Everyday use, China. Hand painted, 1896, owned by Annie. There you can see Annie Butler monogrammed on there. On that one, AOB, Annie Oakley Butler. Looks like her butter dish right there, probably. Being that she grew up in what was formerly Indian territory, Native American territory, she seemed to really love the those style of blankets and the Navajo type things. Some of her lamps, one of her blankets, and then some of her clothes. There are her boots. I guess you'd say her spats. <laughs> satin gloves, Annie satin gloves. Her little eyeglasses. like her address book or her notebook her gold belt well they have all kinds of stuff of hers in here this is great that will be done You know, it's like, it's almost mythical. You've heard so much about Annie Oakley, but you don't, you know, she was before all of our lifetime, so it's like real to see her stuff here. Really makes it real. Home of the Butlers, as well as this print from 1895. And then this is really neat. They have one of Annie's outfits right here. You can see her wearing it on the horse, one of her riding outfits. They have her pants and her boots, all from 1915. We're gonna head into the second room which is all dedicated to her life on the road, professional life. There she is shooting. So here they have memorabilia from Buffalo Bill. It's not easy being a legend in your own time. Some people believe everything they do. This was Buffalo Bill's factory rifle. Other people think that a legend is too good to be true. Made in 1890. Two for Buffalo Bill Cody himself. And there's a picture. And you can see Annie Oakley circled in there. It says that Annie used to travel the world working and would often bring back fabric home to make things out of it for her trips. Gifts and clothing and things like that. That's some of what she brought back. 
She captured the imagination of also, this was a gift to her. You can see it says to Annie Oakley and Frank Butler. So this is kind of crazy. They have a note here that says Prince Edward became King Edward VII in 1901 upon the death of his mother, Queen Victoria. When Annie was presented to Prince Edward and Anne and Princess Alexandra, following a command performance of Buffalo Bill's Wild West in 1887, first she shook the hand of the princess, ignoring Edward's outstretched hand, then she made a statement about the democratic equality of American women. It's pretty gutsy. Now that's a picture of Sitting Bull. And of course I said when we walked in that he gave her the name of Little Sure Shot. This was dyed hair, porcupine quill adornment up here. And it was a gift to Annie from Sitting Bull. Said to have been a trophy from a battle with the Crow Indians. Now this shirt is, it was um, something that was gifted to Annie and it was worn by Short Bull. He was the leader of the Sioux Ghost Dance. So it says Annie said she had won a total of 27 medals for marksmanship. In 1920, she conducted exhibitions to raise money for tuberculosis patients. She meant, melted down many former medals, sold the gold, and contributed the money to a sanitarium. Two of her sisters had died of this disease. And this was presented to Annie as a gift, this gold medallion. For doing that. Here we have all kinds of letters that Annie had wrote and actually things from her last days, like these are flowers from her funeral. And then here's a letter that she wrote. And then over here, it looks like this is her. It's an official document. Um, oh, saying that she paid a debt. That's what it is. And then it says that when Annie was out traveling with Frank, working and touring the world, she never forgot her family and would often bring home gifts and send gifts home. And these were a couple she would send to her nephew. Here's a poster of Annie. Here they have a picture of her at her tent, like at a campsite while she's performing. And it says, notice the bicycle. Annie displayed her athletic ability by riding a bicycle in the arena while shooting target balls thrown into the air. Wow. But they actually have her road case. Her road case, the rocking chair that she's sitting in right there, and her rifle case. So we'll take a look at this. There's the rocking chair that we just saw her sitting in. And then, wow, that is really cool that they have all this stuff. That is pretty awesome. Life on the road. This is a gun that was presented to her as a gift from the Pinehurst Gun Club in 1917. So this gun, it says, is a Remington rifle, model 1912-22 caliber, pump action repeater, was sometimes called a gallery gun because of its popularity in shooting galleries. It was light, reliable, and easy to use. She favored this gun and this model for teaching girls and women how to shoot. And it says after she retired from the Wild West shows, 
for several years. She was a representative of the Union Metallic Cartridge Company, which later was acquired by the Remington Firearms Company. Here's one of the loving cups that she won right down there. And an old, old picture of her signed. Now it says this gun was also used by Annie. Deluxe target rifle, 22 caliber from 1910 used by Annie Oakley. Look at the old scope on it. Then here they have another 12 gauge shotgun purse made by Charles Lancaster. And it says that the stock is engraved Miss Annie Oakley, 1887. And here they have some of the glass target balls that she liked to shoot during her act because they were inexpensive. Her Winchester rifle, one of her rifles. Used by Annie in the groundbreaking film made of her by Thomas Edison in his studio in Menlo Park. Wow, that's really interesting. So she, they made a movie about her, Thomas Edison did, and that was the gun she's using in it. That's pretty neat. And then down here they have one of her handguns, a Colt revolver. Owned by Annie Oakley and used in Young Buffalo's Wild West. 1909 Army 45 caliber. And then right here they have two of her guns. The top one says this is an 1873 22 caliber, was owned and used by Annie Oakley, made in 1887, but not shipped from the factory until 1894. Weird, huh. And the bottom is a Marlin rifle. 22 caliber was won by the donor in a shooting match in Greenville where Annie Oakley was a contestant. So he beat Annie Oakley, really? And then here they have a little iron squirrel figure. It says from the shooting gallery at Chester Park, Cincinnati. Now we've pretty much seen all of the Annie Oakley stuff. This was a really great exhibit. I mean, they had two full rooms of just amazing memorabilia. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I wanna thank Stephen Crower and Janet Tittle for becoming my newest Patreons and helping to support this channel. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please ring the bell for notifications. Have a great night and goodbye.